everyone, welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to talk about what it takes to be a petroleum engineer. And I'm going to go into the specifics of each type of petroleum engineer that you may want to consider some of the skill sets for. Before we get to the content, please be sure to like this video. Subscribe so you can get more content in oil and gas and professional development topics. And please be sure to comment on the video below so I can incorporate your feedback into future videos. Please be sure to hit that notification bell when you do subscribe because I upload whenever I want. Well, let's get to the content. So what it takes to be a petroleum engineer. It really does depend. That's the answer because it depends on what kind of petroleum engineering subdiscipline you're looking at. So the way I'm going to structure this video is I'm going to talk about the different types of petroleum engineering and then what it takes and what kind of skill sets you will need for each type of specific of petroleum engineering. Now, the caveat that I'm going to give is that my areas of expertise have been in production and in reservoir engineering. So I can most likely I'll go more into detail of those courses or the skills that you're going to be needed in order for you to be one of those engineers. But I can also speak to drilling and completions and facilities as well, just to give you some background and also just based on the observations of my husband. My husband has worked all three of those roles and currently working as a drilling engineer and I'm more than happy to provide some of those skill sets of what you need in order to cut it out as a petroleum engineer. First one I'm going to talk about is what it takes to be a reservoir engineer. Now to be a reservoir engineer and to define that actually let me let me define that at first a reservoir engineer is an engineer who focuses on how much oil is taken out of the ground like like the type of oil extraction how much oil extraction is available running economics running reservoir simulations to see the life cycle of a field or life cycle of a well doing well diagnostics so rate transient analysis, pressure transient analysis, those kinds of tests in order for you to realize some of the reservoir properties and then make your evaluation of a particular field or particular reservoir, whatever you name it. And then you convince management that whatever you decide of how many sticks you want to put on the ground, how many wells you want to put on the ground is going to make money. Now, please know that I just combined six types of reservoir engineers all into that definition. And the reason why I bring that up is for reservoir engineering, there's just so many different facets of being a reservoir engineer. The subdiscipline itself has so many other things. You can be a business development engineer where you look at just competitor analysis, you look at public data, and then you run economic evaluations and you never have to touch a reservoir simulator. Or you could be a reservoir simulation engineer where you never have to touch an economic engine in order for you to write your evaluations. You just evaluate the technical components of the field. So now let me talk about what it takes to be a reservoir engineer. One, you have to be really good at bringing data to insight. You need to be really good at bringing large data sets and being able to determine some, get, gain, glean some insights from that. In other words, if you look at a bunch of analog wells and for you to determine what the analogs should be whenever you're creating your type well curve forecast, you're gonna be able to look at all sorts of data in order for you to narrow down what kind of insights you're gonna get from those analogs in order for you to create that evaluation. So, that is one component of what it takes to be a reservoir engineer. Second one is you need to be really good at economics. And I think that's applicable for all types of engineering, but you need to be good for well life cycle economics. So you need to be good at Aries, you need to be good at PhD wind, you need to be good at combo curve or any type of economic engine, but it's not the actual economic engine, the brand that I'm talking about. It is the fundamentals of resource economics that is really important. You need to be able to develop an intuition of what's going to make money versus what isn't going to make money. And that just takes with more repetition and more projects you get exposed to. Another facet of what makes a good reservoir engineer or what cuts it to make a, big res a good reservoir engineer is being able to do decline curve analysis, being able to do a lot of technical analysis. 
So whether you just got to be really good at your math and science, like in your chemical engineering, and you need to be able to understand fluid flow phenomena or in, uh, through porous media, and you need to know the, that kind of phenomena. Because you need to develop an intuition of what kind of fluids are going to be coming out of the reservoir. You're going to need to develop an intuition of what marrying pressure and production data are going to look like and how those trends are going to look like in a log log plot. You're going to be able to figure out how to match data, match production data with an empirical curve or with an analytical curve, such as a decline curve analysis. So you're going to be able, you're going to have to be able to do well at that. Now, the last thing I'll bring up, and again, this is not an exhaustive list, is being able to uh, understand volumetrics really well and understand where to get the data to, uh, to get the, to get the volumetric data or to calculate your volumetrics you need to be good friends with your you need to be good friends with your geologist you need to be good friends with your production engineer you need to be good friends with your completions engineer you need to be good friends with all the subdisciplines in order for you to get a good intuition of that of, of determining volumetrics so that's everything what it takes to be for what it what in terms of technical skills or what it takes to be a good reservoir engineer now i'm going to talk about what it takes to be a good production engineer to be a good production engineer you need to know the field back and forth you need to spend time in the field you need to talk to the field supervisors you need to talk to the superintendents you need to talk to the lease operators you need to talk to everybody to understand the ins and outs of the field and what wells are trouble wells, which wells are the best wells, which wells make uh, take a lot of your OPEX, your operator expenditures, operating expenditures, which one t takes less of your operating expenditures. You need to be able to look at that day-to-day -day data and you need to be able to generate that insight as quickly as possible. So the resolution for this type of data is like day-to-day. -day. You need to have a really good operations background too. You need to know how some of the mechanics work when it, and have writing steps for workovers, writing steps for putting a new installation for an artificial lift. So that brings up to my next point. You need to be good at artificial lift and you need to be good at production equipment, like what kinds of equipment is needed. So again, more of an operations background and more of that hands-on experience. I've seen a lot of mechanical engineers become production engineers for that particular reason. And then I've seen some chemical engineers who have a mechanical engineering inclination that end up becoming production engineers. So those are the things that I would suggest that make a good production engineer. And the last thing is having an intuition of what a well is, how a well is supposed to perform. So yes, you can do decline curve analysis. Yes, you can figure out how much production is being delayed, but you need to have a good intuition by looking at the data, what is happening to the well. So if a well has randomly produced, is having zero production, you need to understand that that is a problem and you need to figure out and you need to do some troubleshooting. So troubleshooting is also another good skill set for you to have as a production engineer. And those are all the things I can think of of what it takes to be a really good production engineer. So again, looking at day-to-day uh, -day data sets, day-to-day uh, uh, -day data of your operations, having good operations data, uh, operations man or operations experience, and then being able to understand your field in and out. Now I'm going to talk about what it takes to be a good completions engineer. What it takes to be a good completions engineer is having a really good understanding of the fundamentals of different types of completions. So for example, hydraulic fracturing is the first thing that comes into my mind because again, I'm a millennial. But for those of you that work in conventional spaces, you need to be able to be flexible and understanding different kinds of completion styles like gravel pack, for instance. So that, or asset stimulation, for example. So that's an example of being able to understand different types of stimulation techniques. Another, another skill set that I would suggest that, that would take to be a completions engineer is being able to understand what levers and what kind of mechanical levers make influence production or influence your operations. So what I mean by that is if you pump in more sand, how much you need to be able to know uh, how much is too much sand or too much of a concentration that can cause a screen out. You need to be able to know how much 
of the, that more fluid that you put, how that's going to influence your resulting production or resulting stimulation job. You're going to need to be able to know how a chemical is going to apply in the field versus how it performs in the lab. So you're going to need to be able to know that. Then you're also going to be able to know, you, you need to know what's in that data van. You're going to need to know every single plot, like the multi plot and things like that. You're going to need to be able to know every single plot. You're going to be able to need to know the the completion operation. So you need to have a good operations background as well. The what does a man like? What's the purpose of a manifold? What's the purpose of a blender? What's the purpose of all components of how you pump your your frac job or how you pump your stimulation job? Whether if you're working in, in conventionals or conventional reservoirs. And finally. You're going to need to be able to know whether, uh, so real time, real time completions is a controversial topic or real time changes for your completions has been a controversial topic because some people believe in that it makes a difference. Other people don't just because of the operational strain it can cause or just because they're not uh, used to it operationally. So if I were you, being able to take large data sets that you see in your completions engineering or in your frac job or in your completions job and being able to generate insights as quickly as possible from 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 that so that would be a similar skill set as to what i even said for a reservoir engineer so those are all the things i can think of what makes a good completions engineer now i'm going to talk about what makes a good drilling engineer and this is based on the observations from my husband I realized having a good mechanical engineering background, being able to understand calculations really quickly uh, in real time, and knowing some of the conversion factors is going to be very important. Being able to have a good intuition of how much cement is too much cement, how much drilling fluid is too much drilling fluid is, is going to be enough weight on the job. You're going to be able to uh, learn how to how to how to adapt to a real-time operation so having that operations background and knowing how to make those calls in the drilling engineering space and the other one is knowing your drilling operations in and out so talking to the drilling superintendent talking to the company man talking to the tool pusher talking to the rig floor rig hand talking to everybody that's in the field is going to be what it takes as far as technical skill sets go to be a drilling engineer but not least, facilities engineering. I like to joke with my husband that facilities engineering isn't an engineering topic that we learned in school, and I ended up choosing it as elective, so you should, he should be really proud of that he married me. So I think this is an, an engineering discipline that goes unnoticed quite a bit, or it's really underestimated, because a lot of facilities engineers are not petroleum engineers by background. Many facilities engineers are either mechanical or chemical engineers by background. So to be a good facilities engineer, you would need to know really well, good skill set in process engineering. You need to know how things work under different types of equipment conditions. You're gonna need to know your facilities in the field in and out, talking to those supervisors, talking to the superintendent, talking to the lease operators, just talking to everybody. And you're gonna need to have a really good background in mechanical engineering and in chemical engineering to be really good at facilities engineering. You need to know your how fluid flows throughout the facility. You need to know potential bottlenecks in a facility. You need to know how to make your facility uh, dummy proof, in other words. So you're gonna need to know all of those things in order for you to be a good facilities engineer. It is a lot of understanding your field. It is a lot of process engineering work. It is a lot of making diagrams and being able to know the fluid flow of, of, of those particular diagrams as well. Now I'm deciding to do a bonus in terms of what it takes to be a petroleum engineer and that's applicable to all of the engineering disciplines. You're going to be able to need to know how to communicate, especially communicating effort to impact. Being able to communicate your impacts is extremely important and build your repertoire, build your credibility and reliability. You're also gonna need to be able to know how to network and then work with cross-discipline teams. As a petroleum engineer, you're not gonna be in a silo as a reservoir production, completions, drilling, or facilities engineer. 
you're going to be able to work with other types of engineering disciplines like your reservoir engineer is going to talk to your production engineer is going to talk to your geologist is going to talk to your completions engineer is going to talk to your drilling engineer your drilling engineer is going to talk to your reservoir engineer to get a better idea of what development plans look like your completions engineer is going to talk to your production engineer to know how many pressure gauges are we going to put on in particular wells so being able to communicate in a cross-functional setting is going to be extremely important and being able to network in that regard is going to be extremely important. And finally, the other thing to keep in mind of what it takes to be a petroleum engineer is you're going to be you're going to have to learn how to communicate by leading with the data. In other words, you can't include your emotions or biases of how the data should look like and then shape your interpretation on based on what the data is look is looking at you need to be able to objectively look at the data come up with some insights and being able to communicate those insights as genuinely as possible to management so learning how to lead with the data is going to be extremely important well folks that's everything that i wanted to share with you guys on what it takes to be a petroleum engineer as usual, please be sure to like this video, subscribe so you can get more content in oil and gas and professional development topics. And please be sure to comment on the video below so I can incorporate your feedback into future videos. This is Yogashi Pradhan, also Yoshi Pradhan, and I run Iron Lady Energy Advisors, a consulting firm in oil and gas. And I'll see you later.